Good morning. I made two videos last night and couldn't save them. So I'm trying again this morning. This is about, I believe day 24, May 8th, yesterday, Lori Vallow Daybell trial. Okay. Hart, I'm gonna call him Detective Hart. I think he's an investigator for the FBI. He does a lot of um, missing children investigations and he's, you know, a special for that. So he ended yesterday. He started the text on Friday, ended today. I really thought we were gonna get some more texts, but as if we need any more. Um, you can just see as the texts go on from October, I think from October 2018 until Lori gets arrested. But I think Nate said it was like June 2019 that they started with. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, you, can, you can see through the text that the more women and people, especially women, that Chad has believing him and asking him for advice, stupid advice like light and dark and that kind of BS, um, it just feeds his ego. It just gets bigger and he just starts pulling out more crazier stuff. That you just have to be a fool to believe. And Thomas wanted us to believe that they were just playing Dungeons and Dragons, but people don't really get killed in Dungeons and Dragons, and they did here. So, they're desperate. They know it's coming to a head, and they know she's losing. I hope she understands that and is starting to feel it. Um, a few of the texts. They were all disturbing. They were all raunchy. Um, they just get raunchier, you know, as they go. And they're full of emojis, like two little teenagers are texting. And Melanie's, her two children, Brighton and Blake, are dark. And they're going to go. And she's going to let them for the greater good, the greater plan that God has. And um, that's going to come back on her, let's hope. That comes back on her. Um, her immunity will end after this, I assume. I don't know if she and Ian are allowed yet to be listening and reading to what's going on in court. Don't put it past her to do it or lie about doing it so she doesn't have to get on the stand because Melanie's can't lie and get out of it now. We have texts. Um, but we all knew she was lying. The girl... You'd ask her a question, and you never really got an answer. She'd just blah, 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 blah. And she'd make sure Ian said nothing. So I'm glad we at least got Ian on the stand. I can't believe anybody stayed with her, but they did have a baby together, so no judging here. Whatever. He does realize that she's easily manipulated by a lot of people. That does not excuse you being ready for two of your kids to go be killed. Thank God Brandon got them before that happened. And um, twice, Melanie's trespassed where he was keeping them at his parents' house. And the second time, she brings Alex with her. And you don't bring Alex with you unless you plan on trying to kill somebody. So, she was ballsy. What the frick? Let me put him outside, I guess. Hold on. Come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go outside, come on, good boy, all right, so, whenever Chad sent Tammy <clears throat> to his parents, her parents, um, it was, like I thought, date weekend for him and Lori, um, 
Oh, this one. Why? Why were there no questions about this one? Al gets sick. Chad does a patriarchal blessing. Now, I've been talking about this for years. And gives him Malachite lip balm. The healing lip balm. Why is nobody asking questions about that? Why? I gotta know why. It's almost like they don't want to know. Or maybe they're really not hearing it. I know I don't have that many followers, but I know Norse does. And she talked about it way back when I did. Well, now there's a text of giving it to someone. I think that's how Joe, Alex, and Tammy died. I do. Possibly even one of Lori's attorneys that dropped dead, who used to come to her house in the evening. This was an attorney she had during the divorce of Joe, which we all know she wasn't happy about. So, it could have been um, her tax attorney, though, because I know she had both, but I think the one that died was the other one, not the tax attorney. I don't know. I think anybody who died from 2018 forward was Lori. I do. Lori and Alex, anyway. Um... And they weren't even dark and stuff at that time. It was just people that were, you know, pissing Lori off. Anyway. Um, Lori and Chad have their first fight. But what it is, is Lori's pressuring him. Um, just go be with your family. Just, we don't need to talk. It's ridiculous. What it is, is it's taking too long for Tammy to die and she's getting pissed. She says, I'm impatient. I can't wait. When can this be executed or whatever? And she's talking about her kids and at that time. And she's really rushing it through the text. She's like, um, Tylee cleaned her room. Did she get switched? Um, JJ woke up in the middle of the night talking to Blake, the real Blake, which is one of Melanie's kids. There's so many damn names. That I do think you need a key for it. Um, now, whenever Chad was talking about how Raphael came to lead one of them that was still alive, but came to lead them and, and Amy and James, Raphael and James came. And Chad told him that he would take good care of Lori when they're gone. So it was about one of the kids. I'm pretty sure it's probably Tylee. And I think some people think that that's all Chad, but Chad was Raphael and James in the past. Raphael is an angel. James, of course, was an apostle, but they were coming from heaven to get this child and lead them in. So, I believe that was the real Raphael and James that Chad was referring to. He just likes to give himself glorified names that of people that were huge in the Bible because, I guess, he thinks he deserves them. I don't know. Um, supposedly, the patriarchal blessing thing is a role in the LDS church. You're not allowed to just run around giving them, and Chad was not allowed to give them. There's so many reasons he was excommunicated. I don't even care about all that shit. But... Um, it's very evident that Lori knew the children and Tammy were going to die, and she was rushing it. She was impatient. She even says, I'm impatient. How can we move this faster? So, the night of Tammy's death, he has family over. And he texts her that he is so sad, but not for the reason everyone thinks. He's sad because he misses her. She sends a picture of herself on the beach. I mean, it must have been nice to just run off to Hawaii whenever you wanted to. Even when your husband was alive, he allowed it. She could do anything she wanted. Even when he was going to divorce her, he still had her and JJ entirely a rent house with a pool. And mirrors all over 
the wall because Lori had to have them in every house because she made dance videos. I wish they would show one of them and embarrass the shit out of her, but maybe it wouldn't embarrass her. She'd probably think, ooh, look at me, look at me. I mean, this chick, we didn't really hear much about what Lori was doing while these were being read. Um, I guess she just don't care. I'd be so damn embarrassed. Um, I was thinking as an attorney, you have to, you have to tell your client everything and the client has to tell you everything or y'all can't represent each other properly. So Pryor, John Pryor is going to have to either discuss with, which I'd, I'd love doing if I was Chad's attorney, or just let him hear. Like, you need to go on YouTube and, and listen to the audio because um, you're all over it. You might want to consider not going to trial, even though I want him to, so that we can see him exposed and embarrass the shit out of him. And maybe his kids will actually hear it. If somebody cares about his kids, like, really has a good relationship with them, or even doesn't, they need to have one of those... Um, What's it called? Where you get somebody and you get them in a room and you're, they're surrounded by people that care about them and they're like, you need help, okay? They need to do that with the five kids that are in their late 20s. Maybe some of them have started their 30s. They're all on their own. Um, they're all married except for Mark the last time I heard, which he just came back from his, whatever his LDS thing is, and so I hear you're supposed to find you a wife right away after that and start making babies, so he could be married, God only knows, I don't know, don't care, but somebody needs to get in a room with them and say, you're not leaving this room until you listen to us, because if you go out and tell one more person, your dad's innocent, he's being framed, you're going to look like a dumbass, and everybody else is going to know why, but y'all, so, I encourage you to, good God, shut up. I have a zoo here. Um, I encourage you to let me play this for you or just read a couple of them to you. They are not planted texts from your daddy's phone. They are texts from his fingers on his phone to Lori's and to multiple other people talking about your mother and how they plan to get rid of her, okay? And if anything, throughout all this, somebody needs to be representing Tammy Daybell and want to have justice for her. And it should be those kids because there's no way in hell I wouldn't make sure before I backed up and represented my daddy, I make damn sure I don't look stupid. I'd make sure I'm, I know the evidence before I go to court with him. I'm like, I would go to prior and I would say, you know, um, my daddy doesn't want me to know what's going on. He doesn't want me to talk to anyone. Um, but somebody needs to share with me what's going on so I don't look like a dumbass. But... Uh, they just, I've never seen anything like this in my life, these people. They're very obedient. They don't need to be because that's not their damn husband. That's not their damn God. Um, they treat him like he is. But, I mean, I hear a lot of men in that religion are treated that way and seen that way. It's very sad to me. Um, I believe in a God. I don't treat my husband like a god. I'm very good to my, my children and my husband, but um, I'm old enough now that if, if I heard my mom had done something, which there's things I've, my mom has done, okay? And um, not criminal or anything, but um, to me, against me. And so I do my research and I find out the truth and I'm, I'm not going to be that person that's just like, she's my mom. 
screw y'all. She didn't do nothing wrong. I might do that about my kids, but not my mom. <laughs> that was ugly, huh? Anyway, um, I just, I would give anything to see Chad's face and anything for somebody to tell his kids what's going on and for them to turn and be representing Tammy instead of him. He doesn't deserve to have that many people care about him. He doesn't deserve it at all. And the very gall of him sitting in jail acting like he sh he's still confused about why he's there. Well, we're gonna enlighten you real quick. Real quick. But if I know an attorney, he's, he's telling him. He's telling him. And Chad's probably like, um, I won't go to court. I'll just tell my kids that, well, Lori got put away, so I'm sure I will. I'm just going to avoid going to court. And then his kids may never know why. And they'll still look stupid for the rest of their damn life. But I don't know what this bird wants today. I don't know. But, <clears throat> also with um, Ian and Melanie, I hope Melanie is hearing about these texts. I hope she's scared shitless. I can't wait for her immunity to be dropped. Hers and, oh my gosh, Audrey Veritario? Her middle name is Liar. Audrey Liar Veritario. The bitch is such a liar if I was the judge and I heard the shit I did Friday and yesterday, I'd be like, Bailiff, we need to put out a warrant for Audrey Baratario because she lied under oath. Her, she needs to spend a couple of days in jail. We need to make an example of her. Um, before anybody gets up here, anybody else gets up here thinking they can just um, blow smoke up our ass. No wonder she sounded so nervous and sounded like she was fake crying and... I think she made up the shit about chopping somebody in a million pieces, which is disturbing that she decided to throw that in there, but didn't do it at the prelim. Um, the girl was texting Lori, asking her how the castings were going. Lori was like, well, one demon got out, another one jumped in, so she could obviously talk to Audrey, clearly. She could talk to Audrey about it, and she was like, in any great advice that you would have would be helpful. You don't say that to somebody unless they're in on something with you. You just don't. So, Audrey's a damn liar. And it was evident. It's like Thomas said. He's like, okay, so you followed her to five or six states repeatedly. You didn't like what she was doing, but you kept hanging out with her. You kept hanging out with her. I picked up on that right away, and I thought that was strange myself. It's not normal. Um, if you don't like what somebody's doing that much, that you say you won't even do it, you feel uncomfortable, you actually have a conscience and you know something's not right, you don't keep hanging out with them. She did. I knew she was lying. Um, I can only think that the only reason that the um, prosecution put her on stand is to get her lying because she wasn't a good witness. But nobody could help Lori now. Um, I think they've put on like 50-something witnesses. And one is definitely not going to help Lori. Lori can't be helped now. There's so many nails in her coffin, she's never getting out. Um, I do wonder if capital punishment can be changed. Like, can Boyce change his mind on that one? Or is it like an Idaho law that women can't die? I don't know. Um, that's the only thing Chad has to use if he wants to get out of a trial. Or just plead guilty and keep it on the table. He's a coward. He probably wants to die. Which, it's ironic that he say about... Charles, that he wonders if he changed the beneficiary in insurance information for the $1 million policy after he had, what do he say, two or three bullets in his chest? So he knew 
how many times Alex had shot him. We didn't even know yet. I don't know if anybody even really knew yet because there was an investigation going on and they realized somebody had stood over him and shot him again. So, Chad knew that, but for him to say that in that way disgusts me. And for you to just be able to say something like that, you have no cares. You have no feelings of emotion for someone dying at your command. You commanded that, Lori and Chad, and Alex gladly did it. He just really got off on acting like he was somebody that could kill somebody for his sister. Oh, the lies, the lies. Um, hey, Coco, no. Um, but what's ironic about it is that they used the firing squad in Idaho. I was going to say Ohio, Idaho. Uh-uh. So... Chad's going to be shot with capital punishment. I did read something that they they could possibly get um, lethal injection. Look, whatever's the most painful. And I hope he's on death row for a long, 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 long time. And no possibility of getting out. Absolutely none. None. So that we know for sure one day he's going to die. It's not going to get overturned for any reason. So... It's funny, you know, every time I watch a true crime thing, I'm like, these people killed these people for money and so that they could be together forever, not have to get a divorce, but just, you know, kill them, get the money, have a lovely life together. All these texts of Lori and Chad, they talk about that so much. And in the end, when you do this kind of thing, you're never going to have what you wanted. You're not going to be together forever. You're going to be in jail forever separately. And the people that lose are usually the kids that are still living that lost both parents because one's in jail and one's evil. And the other one, you know, was murdered by them. So in the end, these people never get what they're doing all this for. Now, Lori and Chad did get it for a couple of months. Maybe even a few. They got to, you know, romance in Hawaii. That was their forever. They'll never get to do that again. They'll never get to put their feet in the sand. They'll never get to hold each other's hand. Oh, I'm a poet. They will never be together. And Lori and her team are throwing Chad under the bus hard. They know that she's lost. And it time for it to end and actually um i think within the next two weeks this one and possibly next one by the end of next week i think we will have voices sentencing for Lori. i hope it is recorded so that we can watch it um that might be the only time the girl really whips up real tears while she's standing there and not in the bathroom so um because all she cares about is her damn self and Chad planned on doing the same thing with her. So they love each other so much. It was just, I mean, by the end of those texts yesterday, if everybody wasn't saying that Blake was right when she said this is about money, power, and sex. I don't know if she threw murder in there, but, you know, that's why they did it. They just had no care for and I guess they thought they made it um, look pretty by having all this demon talk with it both of them knew how they were dying I think Lori helped kill her children but regardless Chad and Lori knew when these people died they knew how they died because they killed them whether it was Alex every time or not they knew it wasn't an angel wielding a sword or anything that came and took them. They were murdered brutally. Without care. Without drugging them. They were murdered brutally. Almost as if they wanted them to suffer. 
And somebody held Tammy down. We know that. Um, I'll be honest with you. I hope that when immunity is dropped on these people, definitely Audrey and Melanie's, possibly Zulema, I do hope they come back and make them accomplices because they knew Tammy and Charles were going to die. They knew it was a vision that Lori Chad and Julie Rowe had. Why did they not tell somebody? They knew for a while. They knew all year. All year they could have told those people or the bishop or people they knew. They could have told somebody to tell them for them if they didn't want to tell them. But they were involved the minute they knew and didn't do anything about it and even kept texting and asking about the darkness or them being in limbo and, and their body being, you know, killed so they could be released from limbo. Bullshit like that. There's no such thing as limbo. You can feel like you're in limbo waiting on something, but there's no limbo. There's no purgatory. I don't even know if there's a damn hell. I believe in God. A God. I believe Jesus Christ was a real man, a real good man. I don't know if he was really the son of God. I want to believe he was. The LDS Church has made him um, a sinner by marrying him. So I'd love to hear who he was married to. Probably Mary Magdalene, which was a whore. So, and she was forgiven. I'm not saying she's, you know, a bad woman, but wow. That's who we're going to marry him to? Let's just don't marry him because then he couldn't be my sacrifice. I just don't want to go there. Um, my neighbors are going to end up texting me and saying, shut your damn bird up. They did one time. They text my son and they're like, could you shut your bird up? I'm like, dang, really? What about all the other birds outside? Why is it just my bird? Because <laughs> <laughs> my bird will pierce your freaking ear drum. Not kidding. It hurts. If he's sitting on your shoulder and he does it, it hurts real bad. So, um, that's where we are. And we're about to get started in 15 minutes again. So, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.